Hello. A few years ago, a young man climbed a tree. He was 23, he was the father of two small children, and he was carrying a dictaphone and a length of rope. And when he climbed to the topmost branch, he recorded a message into the dictaphone, a message about how he had assaulted somebody else, left him for dead, how he was really, really sorry about that. And then he took the rope, hung it round his neck, and hung himself. Why would a, a father of two, with everything to live for, do that? The answer is simply guilt. In this series, we've been talking about some of the main causes of stress in people's lives. And this is one which is a biggie. Guilt is a problem for more people than you could count. Many psychologists say that a large number of patients could be dismissed from their list straight away if only they could cope with this problem of guilt. We all feel wrong about lots of things in our lives, and sometimes it can be a good thing. Carl Rogers, the psychologist, used to say that if we didn't have guilt, if we didn't feel wrong about some of the things we'd done, we'd have no stimulus to be different in future. And so guilt can actually make us perform better next time. The trouble is, when you have changed your ways and performed better next time, there's still the problem of the past, isn't there? What do you do with the fact that you have blown it? You've done things that you're not proud of. You've said things that you should never have said. You've let the cat out of the bag and there's no getting it back in again. What do you do when you feel guilty? Well, some of the guilt we feel, obviously, is false guilt. We should never feel it in the first place. And uh, some therapists are very, very good at helping us not to feel guilty at all. And that's part of the answer. But according to the Bible, there's real guilt too. And one of the reasons that we so easily feel in the wrong is because at heart, that's where we all are. The Bible says a real problem is that we've rebelled against God. And if God seems a long way away, it's not him who moved, it's us. Because we have basically lived selfish lives. We've turned against the way that he intended us to be in the first place. And because we've ignored him and turned our backs on him, we naturally feel guilty. What's more, we keep on doing wrong things. We're in the grip of a thing that the Bible calls sin. And it keeps us doing wrong again and again and again. And even as great a Christian as the Apostle Paul said, you know, the good things I want to do, I can't do. And the evil things I don't want to do, I find myself doing them again and again. Ever been there? I know I have. Been there and bought the t-shirt and come home again. You know, it's like that for all of us, isn't it? We do things that we cannot forgive ourselves for. Other people may forgive us, but we find it very difficult to live with what we're really like. There is one answer to the guilt trap and one answer alone. There are lots of different answers, of course, that you'll find in all sorts of different world religions. Recipes about going on pilgrimages or, or performing penances or doing all sorts of things, offering sacrifices. But only Christianity says, relax, you can't do anything for yourself. The answer to guilt is that somebody has already done something for you. And when Jesus Christ died on the cross 2,000 years ago, what was happening 2,000 years before you were born was that someone was taking care of all of the nasty, rotten, wrong things that you would ever do in the course of your life, paying the price for them, absolutely, sweeping them out of the question so that you can go free. And that's why the Bible says the gift of God is eternal life. It's something he gives as a gift. Jesus has paid the price. And so you can have your guilt forgiven. You can have your, your, your bad record swept clean. You can have a friendship with God again simply by accepting the gift that God has got to give you. Now, you don't do anything to earn a gift, do you? You don't pay for it. You simply take it. Supposing that uh, I was to say at the end of this programme, which I am not about to say because I come from Scotland, I have got a £5 note for every viewer who writes in, don't write in, this is just a suppose, and I'm not going to do it. But if I did, and you wrote into the programme, you wouldn't have to send in any money, you wouldn't have to send return postage, you just have to claim what was rightfully yours. And that's what God says. You don't deserve it, but I want to forgive you, I want you to know my friendship the freedom of living a guilt-free life once again. I want to take your life and make it a new life. Will you give my Holy Spirit the chance to change you by simply accepting the free gift of eternal life? My advice to you is take it while you have the chance. It's the answer to guilt and stress.